Welcome to the second of a series of four videos on what you might not know about thermally modified wood. The last time we did it, we talked more about theory. Today, we're going to focus more on the different applications that, uh, that are out there for using thermally modified wood. So let me share my screen here with you so that you can uh, follow along on the, uh, on the slide deck. All right, so let's recap a little bit. Some of the things we talked last time in our workshop uh, was about the structural stability and some of the characteristics that came with thermal modification. As we go up into temperatures, we change the molecular structure of the wood, therefore making the wood a lot denser and changing that, um, the way that the wood actually soaks up humidity from the air. And in this particular case, it does not. The wood becomes hydrophobic and will not accept any moisture from the air. It's got, in the final process, we reintroduce four to six percent moisture back in the wood, and that's where it stays. Uh, because that happens, we also lose a bit of its bending strength. We lose about 10 percent um, of that during the process, so therefore the wood is not recommended for structural applications. You can use it for structural application, but you got to take into consideration that you've lost 10% of its bending strength. Therefore, you've got to beef up the wood. In the process, we also remove all the organic properties and the sugars that are the things that cause the wood to decay and to rot. Therefore, there's a higher resistance to that. And at the same time, fungus doesn't have any food, so it doesn't grow on it. Insects don't find any food in the wood, so therefore they're not attracted to it. The only difference is with termites, uh, termites will stay away from the wood for a period of time, but then eventually they will go and attack the wood. So to protect against termites, we need to cover up the wood with a product that we call uh, Qtec. And Qtec is a product that was developed in New Zealand uh, specifically for thermally modified wood. And what it does it's an oil-based product that soaks into the wood and uh, therefore gives it a lot higher protection against these uh, pesky little uh, critters. Uh, the process is completely green, environmentally friendly. We only use heat and steam in the process, so therefore no chemicals. And at the same time, as you raise the temperature to higher levels, it gets darker. So, And it's a consistent color through and through the wood, making it a lot more... Uh, exotic looking. So where can you use it? And the opportunities are all over. First of all, you can offer thermally modified wood as a green product. So for those that are concerned about our environment, that are concerned about global warming, that are concerned about conservation, uh, this uh, process is completely green. Only heat and steam is used. Uh, because we talked about structural stability a while ago and not taking any uh, moisture from the air, therefore it also can be used in very high humid areas. Uh, it comes from well-managed forests. We purchase all the raw material from uh, suppliers within North America. And in our case, we're situated in Eastern Canada. So therefore it's all from the Eastern uh, states. Uh, there's an exotic look to it because we've gone to a brown rich color and it's using species of wood in non-traditional areas. And we're gonna go through that and you'll see where a lot of the, uh, these woods are, are used. Traditionally, decking has been pine or spruce or cedar, softwoods mostly. We've never even considered putting hardwoods like um, maple or birch or ash or oak outside. And here is a picture of a uh, ash deck that uh, is, um, uh, has been put up where they used uh, the decking, the stair treads, the uh, flower boxes were all made with the uh, with ash, which is actually the best performer on the uh, on the decking side. Uh, again, traditionally, we've been face screwing a lot of the decking boards. If you want to face screw thermally modified wood, you will be required to pre-drill ahead of time. The wood uh, we've actually densified the wood, and therefore it's a lot more brittle. And you don't want to put in screws too close to the edge. You can do it, uh, but it's uh, recommended that you pre-drill ahead of time. Or you can use hidden fastener systems where you can actually uh, 
we can uh, groove a slide groove in the side so you can put in t-clips or you can use the snap to it uh, decking uh, hidden fasteners that we have that are basically a strip of harpoons like we have here that uh, as you push down on your board it slides through the small opening and then it opens up and it's like a toggle and doesn't allow it to, uh, to open up so uh, maybe to better describe that, we have a video, so I'll show you the video, and then uh, you'll have a better understanding what uh, what we do here. So let's get this video rolling. There we go. So each little harpoon is actually has one screw supporting it, and you have uh, two for the width of the uh, other boards. And the little uh, web in between is just basically to separate them and hold them, make sure that you have equal distance. And here we go, just snap them in into place. There's no face screws, no nothing. You simply put the boards over the top and push them down. There we go, folks. It's simple as that. So the, uh, you can also use this uh, snap to its system for uh, uh, siding, and we're going to get into that in a second. But now all of a sudden where we can bring uh, wooden siding back into the, uh, to the picture. So we have pine siding, we've got birch siding, we've got maple siding, we can do it out of birch, we can do it out of uh, ash, we can do it out of, uh, out of oak. Uh, so these are non-traditional areas for a lot of these hardwoods. As you can see with the birch one here, they didn't put any coating on it, and it's actually gone gray. And that's another characteristic of thermally modified wood is that if you don't do anything and don't protect it against the sun, it will go gray very, very quickly. We can also coat it. So in this particular picture, the client wanted his uh, wood coated. Now, the, uh, this was coated with a, a gray paint. As you can see, the framework around the window is more of a charcoal color. The theory behind this is that the wood goes gray if it's exposed to the sun. So we painted it gray, and as the paint wears off, then the wood will go gray in behind. And uh, we, uh, we hope, and this is hope because this is a test trial, that uh, what will end up happening, this becomes a maintenance-free uh, uh, product because of the coating that we put on it. Now, I talked about a while ago about allowing things to go gray. This is exactly what has happened in this particular situation where the client wanted this all gray before it went up. So the wood was exposed to the ground and allowed uh, three months to turn to this color and then uh, uh, put up on the side of the, uh, of the building. Same thing with this one. Uh, the, and here's a mixture of different uh, uh, products, but the siding that's placed vertically with the clipping system rather than horizontally was allowed to sit outside and, uh, and gray up first. So it's a combination of both sun and rain to be able to get it to, uh, to gray up. But the phenomenon of going gray happens very, very quickly. You'll get this kind of a color from that brown rich color to this gray color within a uh, two to three month uh, period. Uh, we offer with the clipping system, you're kind of restrained to the width of the, uh, the siding boards or the decking boards that you can use. And uh, so there's a couple of different profiles and we can play around with some other ones, but these are the, uh, um, the profiles that are being offered today, which is a single rabbit, double rabbit, and uh, shiplap uh, product that we have. The uh, other uses, interior. So up on this uh, top left-hand corner, what we have is, uh, a uh, weatherwood product that we uh, we have that's actually made out of tamarack, larch, uh, juniper. It's got a number of different names, but it's a softwood. It's actually the Christmas tree that loses its pine needles. And uh, in this particular case, it's got a very beautiful grain. So in this product, what we ended up doing was brushing the product and then putting a, a gray uh, wash on it, which was uh, half paint half uh, water to give it that uh, even older look. Uh, on the top uh, right hand side was a ceiling that was done again with the uh, weatherwood and then coated with an oil. Down below on the bottom uh, uh, left hand side 
uh, the wood is being used in the sauna as a flooring in the wall. And over here on the, uh, the bottom right-hand corner, uh, it's been used in the uh, ceiling. And this is actually the uh, gray building that we showed you uh, a while ago where they continued on with the same motif inside with the wood grayed up as using it for the, uh, the wall, ceiling, and floors of this, uh, of this uh, house. Uh, accent walls, again, behind the bed, is uh, some of our weather wood uh, used below a bar. The ceiling tiles in this case at the, uh, at the bar are actually made with uh, maple. And then you have the, uh, the backdrop for the wheels and the tires at a tire dealership that they use it for uh, a montage so they can use in their demo room. Um, we can customize the, the, uh, the pieces. And this is basically a mixture of the, uh, the gray wood and the brown wood cut in the herringbone style inside the wall that the customers put together, which looks very, very nice. Um, we look at flooring. Now we talked about in the first session that we were going to, um, we have two specific temperatures, thermal S, thermal D. S meaning being an interior application. And if you want something more durable, you go to a higher temperature. The higher temperature on the other hand, brings a darker color. So, the bottom left-hand corner is a floor that was installed out of uh, maple, and uh, it was at uh, 200 degrees Celsius, whereas the floor on the uh, top uh, right-hand corner in this kitchen was at 185. So you see a difference in the lightness. And actually, this picture uh, has uh, the flooring, uh, laminated top, and uh, ceiling and beam covering all made with uh, thermally modified wood. And you have choices. You can use oils or you can use clear varnishes on the floor. They all work. Uh, different laminations, laminating countertops. And this is a straight lamination here on the top left-hand corner. It was used for an island. And uh, the, uh, the bottom uh, right-hand side was a live edge countertop for uh, a bar. You can also, these are two different uh, bars where we've used uh, uh, curly maple on this one on the uh, a left hand side and then just a purely laminated uh, uh, ash on the other one with a little bit darker and different grains as you go through. Because of its stability, you can use it in high humid areas. So top right hand corner being used as a dock at a marina, bottom left hand corner being used as a flooring in a hot yoga room. This is a hot yoga room in uh, Los Angeles, California and uh, was installed three or four years ago, speaking to the owners a couple of weeks back, and they love their floor, and it's still performing very, very well for them. Um, and if you think about hot yoga rooms are running at uh, 75 to 80% relative humidity. Uh, the other one, too, that maybe not too much in the architectural world, but uh, using it for guitar necks, it's very, very stable, so you don't get the guitars on tuning as much as they did before can be used in, and again, uh, another picture of a sauna, furniture, doors, uh, because of the stability. There is a color variation, as I talked to it a couple of times, because of temperature. The top right-hand corner shows the darker part in the middle that we did at 200 degrees, which would be for an exterior application, but you can also use it interior. The lighter color around the outside was done at 185. Uh, the... Uh, the grayness in the, uh, the bottom uh, right-hand corners, again, the wood was put outside and allowed to gray. So it's the same wood uh, that's brown as the gray down here. And, uh, but the only thing that we did is put it outside. So again, environmentally friendly. Inside the process, the two boards that we have here are actually uh, walnut. There's a lot of white in uh, walnut, which you would uh, not uh, think about. But this is uh, raw material. And we've actually thermally modified, as you can see, uh, the same dark, uh, stead dark, the whiter stuff became whiter and it blended in and you don't see the difference between both. So we've been able to dry clean the wood. We can use it inside areas that are protected uh, with, uh, from chemical products. Um, you can use it on food. So a lot of cutting boards and uh, our dust can be used for agricultural purposes or for soaking up uh, oil. Then there's outdoor living where you can use it for garden beds, you can use it for benches, you can use it for fire pits, pergolas, hot houses. 
uh, decking tiles. Uh, there's also rainwater barrels here. Uh, so there's a number of different applications that you can use it in. Again, keeping your environment uh, uh, clean as you go through. So, and then there's some miscellaneous things. People use them for mantles, uh, truck boxes. Uh, this is a uh, the piece down here. It was actually uh, some curly maple that was used for the uh, council in a uh, in a truck. And for those who like to turn, and these are actually duck calls, uh, it turns very very well, and people are using it for different uh, different applications. And doors, again, furniture, guitars are all things that. Uh, um, you wouldn't have thought of using some maple in, in uh, uh, or any other hardwoods in those cases. And, and here you're using it. They look like uh, very rich colored uh, products. So I wanted to share with you today uh, the different applications that you can use on uh, for thermally modified wood. So if you want any more information, you can check out our website at www.thermalwoodcanada.com. Or if you are a member of and uh, good standings of any of the Atlantic Canada associations for architects, and you want to go and get your professional development credits, you can uh, through here. All you need to do is send me an email at thermalwoodcanada at yahoo.ca, and I will in turn send you a registration form, application form with a couple of skill testing questions. Once you answer that, it's proof that you followed it. I will take care of making sure that you get your, uh, your credits. So if uh, you're interested in doing that, uh, that is also possible. I want to thank you again for participating today and listening to this. If you have any questions, please contact us and listen up in another two weeks where we we'll be uh, talking about part three of what you might don't know about thermally modified wood. Thank you very much.